My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, pick up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make me link up. We walk the Champions Cup, Ben Francis. Walk a cup, which team I win the championship this season. Yo, it's a Papa Banda, if a school I go finish the league and beat now. Which you I go collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Missy fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for vehicle. Looking at the good, but load of support. Well, it's more football coming your way on this Friday edition of the Sports Max Zone as we turn our attention now to the Issa Schoolboy football competition. As first round action in both the urban and rural area competitions come to an end, the tussle for second round spots has gone up a notch across the island going into the weekend. Well, let's get you up to date with the schools that have already booked their spots thus far. So, so far in the Manning Cup, we have Eltham High, Heidel High, Mona High, Kingston College, Calabar, Stats, Walmers, Jamaica College, St. George's College and St. Catherine High. For the Da Costa Cup, a lot more. Cornwall College, Manning School, Black River High, Spot Valley, Monroe College, Bel Air, Manchester, Christiana, Homewood Technical, Clarendon College, Glenmere High, Gavi Maceo, Kems Hill, McGrath, Dintil, Ocho Rios High, Happy Grove, Paul Bogle, Yalas, Port Antonio, and Titchfield. All right, well, the feature games coming to you live on your home of champions will feature a double header from St. Elizabeth, where Black River High take on Little London, live on both the Sportsmax and the Scene TV YouTube channels, followed by storied rival St. Elizabeth Technical clashing with Monroe College. For, contact, for context, here's what both groups look like. So we see Zone C standings here, Manning School on 21 points, the Black River High on 15 in second position, Little London in third on nine, then of course Grange Hill and Godfrey Stewart round out that Zone C standings. In Zone E, Monroe College at the top on 21 and Stets on 15, so you can tell what it's going to be like, top of the table clash. And of course, the team that comes out on top will want to have bragging rights. Our football analyst, Lishay Williams, he didn't leave us. He stayed with us and he's ready to talk. I feel like I want to say you know this best, but that's not true because you know other uh, football very, very well. But you are like in the, in the football stands and doing commentary and stuff for these. So hoping that you can give us something to look forward to. So Black River versus Little London. Um, I will say that, you know, as much as it's going to be exciting, one of the team has already been confirmed, the other one, not so much. What are we to look forward from this matchup? I think it's just a continuation in terms of Black River. This has been a culmination for them in terms of restructuring their program. This will be the first time they're getting out of their group in 19 seasons. So I think it's a restructuring of their program. They're just trying to continue to get some momentum going into the second round because it could be pretty tough for them being a second seeded team. So I think they'll just be trying to, as I said, get some momentum, try and play some attractive football. It's a TV game, so it, that's always something to look out for as well. So it will be good for the boys and hopefully we'll get a really good game out of it. Yeah, the Monroe Stets game is going to be something else. The Monroe program at the moment enjoying the fruits of a, of a, of a program from under 15s on the 17s coming up. So um, there are many people who aren't surprised by how well Monroe are playing at the moment. Yeah, th th this is one of the highest profile natural derbies in schoolboy football, just generally in the St. Elizabeth area or, or just anywhere on the western side of the island, you know that Stets versus Monroe in any sport because it's a big rivalry in cricket as well, I know for sure, because I've been to a couple of those games, but in football especially, they, they played out one of the best games in schoolboy football last season in the rain, that one nil victory that Stets had, I believe. So I, I think it's going to be a fantastic game. It's definitely any game played down there at Stets, and I'm really looking forward to it. Those games are really huge games, for not only for bragging rights, for form going into the... The, the, the next round so I'm looking forward to it both of these schools are trying to get back to the apex of 
what they have been in the past. Um, obviously, extremely successful schools in all sports. Monroe with seven Da Costa Cup titles, Tets with five. But six, none recently. None recently. Decades, yeah, for them, yeah. E exactly. So it, it's going to be it's going to be really big. Yeah. Well, another discussion that has been really big. It's been coming out of the Da Costa Cup early on Friday as news came in that head coach of the Dintel Technical High School, Jermaine Miller, has resigned from the job. Dintel Tech, who made the news earlier this season after members of the team were involved in an altercation with a match official leading to player bans being handed out by Issa, as well as the school being put on three years probation. Dintel have already qualified for the second round and will now have to search for someone to fill that gap. Reports surfacing suggest that the assistant coach, Ira Hemmings, will serve as interim head coach going forward. Lish, you're the man in the middle. Um, getting all the news. Did this come to you as a surprise or did you see this coming? I, I saw this coming as, as soon as the, the incident took place. You know, there's a lot of change up going on at, at Dintel, you know, because what, what gets lost on people is that w during the incident, the players that were banned and the players that were banned from the incident were some of Dintel's, if not Dintel's best players. Oh. They were the most important players and for something like that to happen, it automatically diminishes the ability for Dintil to be competitive in the season. And Dintil is a school that, if, if you know about Dintil and their history with coaches, they basically chop and change every year in hopes of getting better, trying to achieve more in the Dacosta Cup, trying to win the Dacosta Cup. So, in my opinion, this was coming for me. Uh, I didn't think that they were going to win anyway, just to put it out there. but. I think in all seriousness, I think that, as I said, I expected it, probably not now, I expected it to play out a bit more, but obviously it's a big dent, but Dintel season has been dented ever since that incident. Yeah, news coming in, Dintel playing Charlemont at the moment and they're leading at halftime, or they were lead, leading at halftime, 3-0, trailing 2-1, they were trailing actually um, against Charlemont. Um, can you confirm, though, if the coach resigned or he was fired? Because I hear conflicting stories. The story that I got was that he resigned. The story that I got was that he wanted to resign from the incident took place. So that's why another reason why I said that I wasn't too surprised that it happened. But the story that I got was that he resigned. Okay. And would it surprise you then to hear that they are trailing in the match that they are playing at the moment? No, not at all, even if he was still there. Because as I said, the last some of their best players, if not their best three best players. And it, it, they, when something like that happens, all the news on you, all of the, 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 the things going on in and around uh, the school, they're young. Because what, what, get, what gets lost on people very often is the fact that because schoolboy football in Jamaica is so publicized and it's so big, people seem to forget that these people are children. The players playing, they're children, they're under 19. So although it's so big and so you expect them to be playing with a, a lot of responsibility and not be making mistakes and here and there, it, it's their children, it's going to affect them, they're going to play worse with all of these things happening and they're already a high profile school so this is even more on them so I'm not surprised in the slightest that they yeah. would start to suffer. All right, Lish, well, we want to thank you so much for joining us on the Sports Max Zone. Have a good weekend doing um, commentary on these matches. Yeah, I'll, I'll try my best. I always do, you know. Yeah, Lish Williams, there, of course, our football analyst. Uh, it's break time, and then we come back with Interact. With peaceful and the youths now are Yo, it's a schoolboy football, no local The youths are move on to international big league And I steal people out, but member which party start It's a schoolboy football Run, come, look one, look all Which team are the best and like a better than the rest And if I hear team beat your chest It's a schoolboy football A team could 